it's only once Russia leaves that you get a sense of what they've done. What allegedly happened here is a picture of brutality. This used to be a police station in Kherson. After Russian forces took control, officials say it became a torture chamber. Angela, a TV journalist, now in Kyiv, spent 31 days there. On the third floor, people, men, were beaten. On the first floor, we heard that it was electrocution. When the person is being tortured with electricity, you hear it. It is a peculiar sound. After hearing what Angela's been through, you get a really vivid glimpse of what this place must have been like. There is still the smell of burning in the air, but the silence is almost deafening. And each one of these rooms has its own story. And all of them will come out over time. She shared cell number six with four other women. What she didn't know was that her boyfriend was there too. There were some people who were electrocuted. It was horrible. One guy was brought to the cell after interrogation. His tongue was black. It was so swollen, he couldn't put it back in his mouth. In Kherson, daily life runs alongside grim discoveries. A mass grave was found here. Elsewhere in the city, the bodies of 63 civilians were also found. They all say investigators showed signs of being tortured. There were more than 3,000 crimes committed throughout occupation, the chief investigator tells us. 90% of them are war crimes, including rape, torture and murder. As the evidence mounts, so do Moscow's denials of targeting civilians. But when Russia retreats, it leaves a now familiar footprint. James Waterhouse, BBC News, Kherson.